you take a look at Singapore's vaccination rate, it's making massive improvements. It is at where uh, we were targeting, perhaps even faster. Is it fair to assume that its reopening strategy is on track? And if so, what can we expect? Thank you very much. In fact, our vaccination has made good progress and it's slightly ahead of schedule. We have planned to achieve a two-third of vaccination of a whole population by our National Day, 9th of uh, August. In fact, we are slightly ahead. We have achieved uh, 70% by the time we reach our National Day. And we are uh, hoping that we will be able to cover 80% of our population by end of this month or early next month. That will allow us to remain on track on our opening. But our opening uh, strategy is not going to be a big bang strategy that we open and free for all. And uh, the risk of doing that is that infection rate may climb very rapidly which will pose a risk to uh, uh, unknown factors, including uh, overwhelming the hospital uh, capacity. So we still need to ensure that our opening process is a carefully calibrated one, taking a more cautious approach and doing so in a step-by-step -step manner so that we will continue to open up, but at the same time, keep the number of right. infections generally lower. What would it take for Singapore to have groups of more than five or eight, what would it take for Singapore to perhaps remove the curfew of 10.30 for businesses? What would it take, Minister? I think it will also require the entire uh, uh, whole world's uh, infection to come under control because Singapore is an uh, open economy. We still have uh, uh, travelers coming from overseas, including business travelers, as well as uh, Singapore citizens who are traveling overseas and returning to Singapore. And therefore, there continue to be risk of uh, import of uh, new cases, as well as the emergence of uh, new variants. So I think it is important for us to bear in mind that infection will continue until the whole world is safe. And also, we have to bear in mind that uh, the vaccines today, although it is very effective against uh, severe diseases, it is somewhat uh, less effective uh, uh, to prevent a transmission. So we will continue to see number of cases in Singapore. In fact, it will continue to grow if we continue to open up. We are prepared for that, but the key is to ensure that we keep the number of severe cases and hospitalization cases low. And this will allow us to progressively open up the economy. In time to come, uh, we will then be able to allow more people to uh, socialize together together. Minister, you talked about how it is important for Singapore to ensure that its healthcare system, its uh, hospitals are not overwhelmed is there a threshold is there a vex or is there a hospitalization rate that singapore finds acceptable give us a sense of what we are looking out for when we can expect a, a clamp down or tighter restrictions what are the numbers you're looking at i think it uh, depends on many factors it also depends on the uh, severity of uh, the diseases the cases that we are seeing and uh, we have sufficient capacity at the moment, uh, but we should not take that for granted because we have seen it happen in all over the world. When the, uh, a new wave comes about, you will see cases rise exponentially. And that is what we are trying to uh, uh, avoid. So we will uh, accept that the number of cases will go up as we open up more, but we have to do all we can to avoid an exponential uh, explosion on number of cases which have seen in other cases. And if we do have a exponential growth on number of cases, then we will have a problem with the healthcare capacity. But if we are able to maintain uh, the number of cases, uh, allow it, if, even if it grows, if we are able to slow down the growth rate, then it will allow us to expand our capacity as we go along. You've talked about opening up Singapore to international travelers who have been vaccinated. Apart from the four countries that you've mentioned before, uh, what other countries are you looking at? Would that be the US, UK? Any clarity on that? We are keeping our options open. We are in discussion with uh, quite a number of countries, uh, but it also depends on the situation both uh, locally in Singapore as well as the epidemic uh, situation in those countries. If they are able to keep the infection under control, and the infection rates are uh, uh, acceptable, and then the vaccination rates are high, and those are the countries that we will be prepared to uh, discuss. Are the US that, and the UK uh, in that list that, that's been considered? Yes, uh, we, we continue to look at uh, including uh, countries like UK, US, Australia, and so on, to explore possibilities of opening up. 
We may start with uh, some pilot uh, arrangement where we allow groups of people uh, with uh, controlled uh, itinerary on a controlled uh, um, arrangement so as to ensure that they are bubble wrap to uh, prevent uh, uh, transmission of the disease. And we may do a few of these pilots, uh, particularly for the vaccinated travellers. Uh, Minister, the world is debating uh, booster shots right now. We have Israel already uh, given out about 1 million booster shots, the U.S. considering for those most vulnerable. What's Singapore's position on the booster shot? Uh, our expert uh, committee is uh, studying this uh, uh, issue together with uh, collecting, at the same time collecting uh, scientific data to better understand the effect of a booster shot and the, the, the need for it. And uh, in time to come, we may uh, introduce a booster shot, particularly for those who are uh, immunocompromised, where their immunity has uh, uh, de declined. And uh, those will be, we may need to uh, provide them with uh, uh, additional booster shot. But the expert committee is studying this uh, very carefully and taking into account the uh, evidence that are emerging uh, from the scientific world. Minister, in your capacity as a trade minister, are you concerned about the shutdown that we're seeing in China right now? There are concerns that perhaps that could lead to shipping woes and that may impact Singapore, which is a trade-relying country. It's just raised its growth projection. It's, is that at risk? We are monitoring the situation around the world very carefully because Singapore is, uh, as I said, it's a business hub. We are well connected to the rest of the world through our shipping lanes as well as our digital connectivity. So I think it is important for us to continue to look at the resiliency of our uh, supply chains. So we are also in close uh, uh, touch with our business leaders, better understand uh, their strategy to strengthen their supply line uh, uh, resilience. Uh, we are watching this uh, very carefully, uh, but by the moment, uh, it doesn't seem to be affecting our shipping. What's the biggest risk to uh, Singapore's growth projection right now, given that we're seeing the reemergence and the spread of the Delta variant? Uh, we've seen perhaps uh, even a slowdown in China. Uh, its data yesterday fell short of estimates. Uh, we understand that uh, the key uh, concern that we have is really new waves of infection, particularly new variants that may emerge out of COVID-19 which will uh, knock us off our uh, uh, course, uh, not just Singapore, but the rest of the world as well. So we are watching very carefully the, the emergence of uh, new uh, possible new variants around the world. And we are in touch with the scientific community in other parts of the world, the world to continue to keep a close eye on this uh, development. And we must always be prepared uh, to respond very quickly. But from Singapore's point of view, we have a very strong fundamentals our economy continue to grow strongly, particularly in the export-oriented sectors. So I think we are quite confident that we will be able to achieve our projection this year. Mr. Gan, Singapore will be welcoming U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris to the city. What priorities or what issues will be key in those discussions with her? We will discuss a wide spectrum of issues, including our collaboration is in many areas, not just the economy. We will discuss how we can look at pushing ahead with sustainability issues, how we can collaborate more in terms of research and development in technology, and as well as the people to people exchange. I think there will be many areas of interest that we will be discussing with uh, Vice President Harris. Her visit comes hot on the heels of uh, U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken to Singapore. Do you think uh, it is a reflection of uh, closer relations between the U.S. and Singapore as well as Southeast Asia? I think uh, it is a welcome uh, visit because uh, it also reflects the uh, U.S. Uh, interest in Singapore as well as uh, uh, in the Asian region. I think this is an important uh, development because we do want to see a, a stronger engagement from the U.S. in this region uh, in terms of the economy, economic area, as well as uh, other uh, areas, uh, politics, uh, political area, and, and dipl diplomacy as well. So I think for the regional cooperation, uh, it is very important to continue to have U.S. engagement in this area. 